Nationwide this evening, the work of an amazing voluntary group in County Waterford, helping to provide hampers and goodies which can bring Christmas cheer to those who are less well off in the community. Also, gift ideas for one and all as we meet some of the monster craftspeople who have come together at the Christmas Craft Fair in Cork to sell their produce, which they have spent months making. Good evening, you're very welcome to Nationwide. This is the month of December, the season of goodwill, and with Christmas just around the corner, we're giving you the chance to win a very special prize. This evening on Nationwide, you can be in with a chance to win 10,000 euro in cash. So have pen and paper at the ready as we'll be giving you the details later in the programme. But first this evening, it's all about craft and craftspeople here at City Hall in Cork. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Well, events such as this fair here in City Hall in Cork and at Gifted in the RDS provide our craftspeople with an amazing opportunity to showcase their produce. I'm joined now by Susan Brindley of the Design and Crafts Council Ireland to talk a little bit around this, Susan, and it is really important for craftspeople to be able to meet their customers. Yes, and it's a fantastic opportunity. As you said, fairs like this, um, gifted in Dublin and then throughout villages and towns and cities all over Ireland, it provides a fantastic opportunity for consumers to do their Christmas shopping, to find um, beautiful products, gifts with meaning, gifts that are being lovingly designed and created on their own doorstep. They may not even be aware of that. And it gives them an opportunity to meet the people behind the products, to learn, you know, to give substance to the gifts that they're purchasing for Christmas. And in terms of the craftspeople who are at work, what are the numbers to support it around Ireland? So um, on our um, register of client enterprises, so the Design and Crafts Council Ireland has about 3,000 registered businesses. That's right across Ireland and almost 80% of those are based outside of Dublin. So we have lots of businesses that are in rural areas, in villages and towns across Ireland, providing um, really important vital jobs in those regions. They're sustaining communities and also they're producing beautiful, sustainable work, things that you know, is designed to, um, to last and the heirlooms of tomorrow really to pass down through generations. Sustainability uh, is, isn't just a watchword or a fashionable word at the moment. This has real meaning here, particularly for craftspeople. Well, that's true. Um, consumers, I think, now are a lot more conscious of their purchasing and the power of that, and, and rightly so. But I suppose the key message is that um, sustainability has been central to craft and craftsmanship for centuries. You know, talented people were inspired by the landscape, they soared, sourced um, the raw materials in their local area. I suppose a key thing would be um, to um, tie in with that whole idea of um, buying less and buying better to purchase pieces that have meaning and that are designed to last, um, not things that are going to end up in landfill. And, you know, whatever budget you're working to this Christmas, if you look around for makers, um, you'll find beautiful pieces that are designed and made here in Ireland and like that, designed to last. Hello, Mary Renane of Arbor Jewellery. Absolutely, and pleased to meet you. Yeah, I'm looking around here, you have lovely items. Thank you very much, absolutely. So as you can see, I love working with pearls. So everything is made with gold, silver and pearls. Um, we're a mother and daughter team. Um, Isabel and myself work together and uh, designing and making everything in Ardmore in County Waterford. Sustainability is part of your mission? Very much so and increasingly so all the time. And um, we're always striving in the workshop to, um, to source um, sustainable and ethical raw materials and also have very um, ethical work practices in the workshop. So we use um, gold and silver, eco-silver which means it has been recycled and our gold is all fair trade gold. And we love our pearls in Ardmore and just recently I have come across um, a supplier of sustainable pearls in Denmark and I think it's the way to go. It's, um, it's what we want to do as a business and it's what our customers want us to do as well. Well, as we mentioned earlier in the programme, all this week on Nationwide, we're giving you the chance to win 10,000 euro in cash to spend as you wish. 
Enjoy the Christmas of your dreams, a week away in a five-star hotel in Ireland, or simply pop it in the bank to use on a rainy day in the new year. What you do with this fabulous 10,000 euro cash prize is completely up to you. So, for your chance to win, answer this question. Christmas Day is celebrated on which of the following dates? Is it December the 3rd, December the 25th, or December the 18th? If you know the answer, call 15 17 71 71 15 or text the word nation followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost two euro and three cent. Calls from other networks may be higher. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines close at midday on Wednesday, the 11th of December, 2019. Further details are on www.rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will be revealed. You know what, buying gifts for the men in our lives can be difficult and it certainly can be tricky if your man has a beard. But Sheila Hayden of Machado Men's Grooming is going to fill me in on what we need to do for the man in our life who has a beard. Um, I suppose we have a range of uh, beard products. Uh, we're based in Leash, uh, Port Leash, and we have a range of natural products. They're 100% natural, and we are offering with beard oils, beard balms, and beard combs. I suppose the beard oil um, is made using an organic Portuguese olive oil, castor oil, and uh, jojoba oil. Myrtle oil is our um, main ingredient in as well, which gives it a scent. Myrtle essential oil comes from the Highlands in Scotland, and myrtle uh, is, is a beautiful uh, oil. It's many, many um, properties. It's antibacterial and antiviral. And with the beard oil, you, use it, you can use it every day after a shower, use a few drops on the palm of your hand. And with the beard balm then, the beard balm is used for once or twice a week and it helps the skin underneath the beard from getting dry and flaky. Our Irish men yep. good at uh, general grooming and at minding themselves when it comes to their beards. Uh, they are indeed. Um, I have plenty of customers of ours who take big interest in minding their beards and they go for regular grooming where they'd go once a week and they'd have their beard lines uh, minded in and to be very conscious of their skin underneath as well underneath the beard and in our beard balm as well um, we're actually using a, a beautiful shea butter from Uganda and we're buying the shea it comes direct and there's 30 families in Uganda in a social enterprise who are producing this uh, shea butter and it comes from a business called the shea house so yeah. this shea butter actually goes into the products that you make yeah so the shea butter goes into our beard balm um, we're using it it's a uh, Shea trees are one of the most sustainable ingredients you can use. It they take up to 20 years to form fruit and it, they grow for 200 years. They're organic, they don't need any maintenance and they bear fruit year after year, so they're very sustainable. Hello, Davian. How are you? Hello, Anne. Nice to meet you. How are, are you doing? Are you the you or are you the me from you and me? I'm the you and this is the me. <laughs> Hello, so, Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, hi, Anne. So, how are you? you're based in Galway, is that it? Based down in Galway now, yeah, and we produce a variety of handcrafted furniture, contemporary art, um, all using uh, spalted beech or bog woods um, sourced from the bo Connemara bogs. So you do all the working yourself? I do all the handcrafted stuff myself now, yeah, in the garage there, working hard. And <laughs> what are your big items? Are these kind of things popular at the moment? The, the mirrors would be very popular, kind of very modern feel to them. Then the, the bog wood would be very popular as well. It's got so much depth and character in it. Um, then some of the kind of smaller art pieces make some nice Christmas gifts. Absolutely, um, I'm looking at this one here now. I mean, that's absolutely gorgeous. So that would be a mountain ash bowl with yeah. the contemporary art then done on top of it. And it's all sealed so you can have your fruit and things in there, no problem. Well, what I'm struck by here is the fact that any of these items would make a fantastic Christmas present. But I do fancy the idea of browsing around here a little bit longer. So we're going to take a break now. And when we come back, we'll be bringing you more crafts from Cork. See you shortly.
You're welcome back to Nationwide and you're welcome back to Gifted in Cork where we are surrounded by a gorgeous crafts and some fabulous food such as Kinsale Mead, Grand Grand Food or Galti Honey Farm. Now any of these items might easily find themselves in a Christmas hamper. And in Dungarvan County Waterford a group of like-minded people came together to assemble Christmas hampers to spread some Christmas cheer. Helen McInerney has the story. It began with a group of friends getting together to give hampers at Christmas to those living alone in the Dungarvan area. A year later, and the small group has grown to over 500 people who are now involved with the initiative. They call themselves Surprise Surprise, but they're not surprised by the wonderful support they've received from their local community. This time last year, a good friend of mine, Alma Shanahan Power, um, got together with a few people and had the idea that there's lots of people living alone and at Christmas time it can be very lonely for them. So she decided that maybe we'd come and make hampers that we'd give out to people living on their own. And we decided, yeah, we'll do maybe 30, 40 hampers. And it actually turned out to be 330 hampers. So it was accepted and just embraced by everybody as such a wonderful thing to do. We delivered 333 and we went the whole like we said, Dungarvan, Abbey, Side Ring, Old Parish, Leamy Brine, the Nair Valley, Valley McCarberry, Fillers Town in Aglish. And now I find people that got hampers last year calling me. There's a new woman after moving in beside me and she'll be on the list for this year, won't she? So that's, you know, and we'll also be covering food hampers for people falling through the cracks. We have mortgage, we have ESP, we have children going to school, everything is getting dear. People are slipping through the cracks. This will be a family hamper. But we have a man and a woman that do it and they're absolutely amazing. It was a little acorn, 30 people. We've now 576 on the page. Um, it's gone from strength to strength, but I think what it is, is this friendships have to be made. A lot of people wouldn't have known each other, now know each other. And it's all through surprise, surprise. And every one of them are talented in one way or the other. Hi, Jean. Hi, Caroline. How are you? Great, how are you? I have a donation for surprise, surprise. Great. Yeah. As a group, they decided to contribute a couple of euro each week into a fund. Local florist Jane Casey collects the donations. She also gives the group red ribbon and cellophane with which to wrap the gifts. I heard about it last year through Alma. Alma um, put a post on Facebook that she had this idea and would anybody like to get on board? So I thought it was a great idea. Um, so I said I'd help her out and take the donations. You know, it'd be easy to drop off for people in town, you know. Yeah. And do many come in? Oh, I got a good few in, yes, yeah, yeah. So people who are in doing their shopping, if they have five euro, you know, they'll put in an envelope and I'll take it and pass it on. While Christmas is just around the corner and the focus is on the Christmas hampers, the group also do bags for people who are in hospital. We started to do hospital bags because nowadays people living on their own, they might have to go to hospital in an emergency. So we prepare these bags that contain a towel, pyjama stroke, nightdress and a bag of toiletries and we call it a bag of dignity. And we left them with the ambulance drivers, the fire brigades, the Gardaí, um, Simon community, everywhere. So they're there if somebody is in an emergency until their family come. Betty, whose husband Stephen is retired, suggested to him that he might make a fidget board for people with dementia. Betty came up with the idea, she sees something on the internet regarding the small boards and she asked me to have a look at it and see would I be able to put something together like that so I agreed to give a bit of help along the way, enjoy doing it. I'm retired for two years now so it puts down a bit of time for me as well. So there's all different fidgets on it like doorbells and knobs and shooting bolts and all these different things and um, and then 
somebody said an autistic child would love that so then we custom them again to suit the autistic child and we've now put them into three units where children with autism are taught and we've put them into a couple of the hospitals and we also have individual boards for the men's wards. I love being involved in the community, I love giving. My, my greatest thing is that I, do, I never want to get, I want to give, so this just suits me. Another idea the group came up with was walking aid bags, where people who use walking aids can store various items, like glasses or purses. Surprise, surprise are constantly coming up with new ideas to make life easier for people. And while they began life in Dungarvan, many of the surrounding villages in the Waterford area, including Stradbally, have come on board. I knew Alma, the founder, for many, many years um, because I've done a lot of fundraising in the past. Um, so then one evening I was out with Alma and she was, we were going on about how we were going to make the group survive past Christmas. So I have um, an Airbnb property in Stravely um, and I gave a voucher for it. So that kind of got the, the group to survive past the, the Christmas period. And from there, the small seeds grew into, a, into something much larger than initially anticipated. It was pre predominantly focused on the town of Dungarvan. So my aim was to get it out into the environs and, and that's what I did. I know Alma with the last 37 years. Alma and myself worked together and we're social friends and have been personal friends for many years. So when I heard of Alma's initiative, surprise, surprise, I just thought it was brilliant. And uh, I suppose what's, what's brought me here today is because it was such an amazing initiative, I'm part of Unite the Union. We have a branch and we asked for donation, which I kindly give to Alma today. €1,000. We are honoured to be giving it. Young people also have become involved with the group. Last year around Christmas time, they were doing the hampers and I had my man going around giving out the hampers. And when you go to the doors, Caitlin, you know, what kind of a reaction do you get? There's so many people that like don't have anybody thinking about them. So it's great like that they know that there's still somebody out there thinking about them at Christmas. I was involved with Alma doing the hampers last year and I just took the two kids with me dressed up and they went around and it was lovely to see the reaction of the older people. Really when you know, when the kids went to the door with it and they appreciated a present. A lot of them aren't getting any presents and it just felt that the lads, you know, they found that they were giving something back to people and, that, you know, some of them, they gave in their own money last year to buy little presents for people. So it was nice for them to give something back as well, you know. Alma says the generosity of people is amazing. Community is huge. Like, um, as far as I'm concerned, we all need to do our little bit. And if everyone does a little bit, my dream for this is to see this in every town in Ireland. Maybe not to what we've come to, you know, but even the hamper at Christmas and the emergency bags. I'd love to see it happening and it's not that hard. And as we said, we would be very willing to work with any group that would like to do it. And well done to all involved in the Surprise Surprise group in Dungarvan in County Waterford. A quick reminder now of our competition. If you want to be in with a chance to win a fabulous €10,000 prize in cash, then answer the following question. Christmas Day is celebrated on which of the following dates? Is it December the 3rd, December the 25th or December the 18th? If you know the answer, call 15 17 71 71 15 or text the word nation followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the air network will cost two euro and three cent. Calls from other networks may be higher. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines close at midday on Wednesday, the 11th of December, 2019. Further details are on www.rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will be revealed. I am a real sucker.
worker in the right. nicest possible way for lovely soaps and lovely smelly things. Tony Hoynes from Palm Tree Irish Soap. Tell me about your products here. Basically, we're an artisan producing uh, soap company. We started as a soap company producing artisan soaps. They're all handmade in Killaloo. This is our lavender, which is probably the most popular of our soaps. Oh, lovely, lovely. They're all individually hand stamped and uh, they've got the date on them as well. The best before date built into them as well. So people who buy it, they know what date has been made. You have no packaging on this, Tony. We're trying to get away from packaging. We're looking at a zero waste approach to everything that we do now. And how so, is the customer responding to that? At first, it was difficult. People didn't like the idea of no packaging, but now people are starting to jump on board and get behind us, really, yeah. We do a little gift pack here now. It's actually covered with cellophane. Now, it's a biodegradable cellophane, so it's plant-based. So that will actually, if you left that in water, it would break down over time. It's a little gift pack there of little sample soaps and it's got a paper tape on it as well. So it's environmentally friendly. And that would work for Christmas. And a nice little stocking filler. Yeah. And in terms of the other products that you have on offer here, I'm looking at the candles in what looked like uh, bottles. Oh, they're what, they're basically, it's a new, given a new lease of life to, to wine bottles, champagne bottles. So what we've done, we've taken the bottles from a local restaurant, we hand cut them, polished them, clean them all up and then we fill them with a coconut wax and it's a pure essential oil mixed in with that on a 100% cotton wick. So it gives a lovely clean burn. As you can see one burn in there now, it gives a lovely scent for them as well. Well, here I am. I find myself at Ceramafik with Jenny Eher and Jenny. Hi, how are this you? is lovely. Really gorgeous display you have thank here. Thank you. Thank you. So we make ceramic homeware. Me and my partner. It's a range of planters, wall hangings, and we do porcelain jewellery as well. A show such as this, uh, it's a great way to meet your customers and oh, get absolutely, feedback. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it's the best way for us to do it. Yeah. Yeah, because people get to see the stuff in person and we get to meet people, talk to people, tell them about what we do, yeah. explain the kind of story behind things and just to get the brand out there, to get people to, to get familiar with it so they, it gets into their minds and they come back again and maybe for online sales. And, and where is the business for you at the moment? Well, mostly we do shows like this um, and online as well. We have an Instagram that we, people sell on um, through the Instagram. We're working on a website. We're hoping to launch that in January. So this is kind of um, mainly what we do. Well, the time now has come for us to say goodbye and I hope we've given you some ideas for the Christmas shopping. And please remember that wherever possible, do buy local. When we see you again on Friday, we'll be putting the spotlight on craftspeople at Gifted in the RDS. And so in the meantime, from all of us on the Nationwide team here in Cork, good evening. <laughs>